Hello, YouTube Slight Warrior here, and today uh, we're going to be doing another card discussion. But before I get to that, I just want to quickly apologize for the little audio glitch that I mentioned in the last video. Uh, it seems like it's going to be doing that uh, at the beginning of all of my videos, so I can't really do anything about that. Uh, so, you know, we're just going to have to move on from there. But anyway, yesterday I did a video on the neckcloth of Trishula. If you haven't seen that video, I'll be linking it down in the description. But in that video, I told you guys that I would be looking for other cards that would be released in this SPTR pack. So I did. I looked through the set, and this card here, there weren't very many cards in the set uh, released yet, but this card here, Neckloth Exomir, uh, caught my eye because, of course, it is the ritual spell card used to ritual summon the Neckloth of Trishula. So what I'm going to be doing is analyzing its effect and comparing it to the other big ritual spell cards in the game that we have right now. Okay, so let me just get to reading it. Uh, Neckloth Exomir is a ritual spell card. This card can be used to ritual summon any Neckloth ritual monster. So like I said, it seems like there's going to be multiple Neckloth ritual monsters. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field or banish Neckloth monsters from your graveyard whose total levels equal the level of that ritual monster. You can only use the effect of uh, this effect of Neckloth Exomir once per turn. If you control no monsters, you can banish both this card and one Neckloth monster from your graveyard. Add one Neckloth spell card from your deck to your hand. It says spell card, not ritual spell card. So that means that Neckloth could be getting other spells that aren't ritual spells. Okay, so uh, there are two parts to this uh, this effect. There, are, Well, three parts. There's the reg regular ritual wording that you can tribute monsters from your hand to field. But the extra part here, you can banish Neckloth monsters from your graveyard. So if you have, uh, let's just talk about in the case of summoning the Neckloth of Trishula. If you have... Neckloth monsters in your graveyard, whose levels equal 9, but the Neckloth uh, of Trishula can't be summoned by using level 9 monsters, so they have to be levels that add up to 9. You can banish them from your graveyard instead of tributing anything from your hand or field. Seems pretty good. It, of course, we're going to have to see what the other Neckloth support we get is because it has to be stuff that can add up to level 9 for this guy because he can't be ritual summoned by using level 9 monsters for some reason. Okay, so then the last part of the effect is that uh, if you control no monsters, you can banish both this card and a Neckloth monster from your graveyard. Add a Neckloth spell card, like I said, not ritual spell card, spell card from your deck to your hand. So it's a little search effect there. You have to have a little bit of setup, but that is not a once per turn thing. I'm not exactly sure if that matters. The, the first effect, you can only use it once per turn. Uh, but, you know, the second one, you can just do it three times, I assume, because there's three Neckloth Exomirs. So maybe that'll be what the archetype does. You can, you know, banish all the ritual spells and a Neckloth monster to add a spell card from your uh, Neckloth spell from your deck to your hand. Maybe that's what the archetype is going to be focused on. But anyway, so uh, with those two effects in mind, let's go compare that to the other ritual spell cards we have in the game today. Advanced Ritual Art is normally the choice of many duelists for ritual summoning because it doesn't have you lose any hand advantage uh, when you're activating it, besides, you know, the minus one you get from inherently uh, activating a spell card, right? Because uh, it tributes monsters from the deck. I believe it's still a tribute. Send, you send monsters from the deck. They have to be normal monsters, so that's, you know, a problem. But uh, with Herald, a lot of them play this, and then they'll play the uh, the <laughs> the girl with a long Japanese name, it's, uh, level six uh, normal monster. But anyway, yeah, that's probably the most common ritual spell card, simply because it's the least minus. You know, ritual summoning is inherently minus because you have to summon them from your hand, so it's a minus one of the hand plus the spell card has to be activated from the hand, so it's a minus two from the hand, uh, and you get one card from the field. If you do it conventionally with like a normal ritual effect, like this one has, then you have to tribute. Uh, at least in this case, you have to tribute at least two monsters from your hand or fields. So that's that's you know a pretty big minus. But advanced ritual art normally gets rid of the minus from that. You can summon this guy with advanced ritual art. The only problem is that there aren't any level nine normal monsters, and even if there were, you couldn't actually use them with him. So uh, the monsters that you'd have to use with advanced ritual art would have to be two separate monsters, with, which add up to nine because you know, nine is an odd number, so you can't use the same monster <laughs> uh, because they have the same monsters have the same levels, of course, and two monsters of the same level can add up to nine because like I said it's an odd number okay so moving on uh, some other common ritual spell cards uh, Gishki Aquamir. Gishki Aquamir is the choice spell card for most Gishki decks because Gishki decks like to not go neg just like any other ritual deck and Gishki Aquamir is the best card for not going neg because of the second effect here you can shuffle this card from your graveyard into the deck to so target a Gishki ritual monster in your graveyard return a target to the hand that also went along with the whole Gishki loop because you could just keep looping the spell cards and summoning the uh, the ritual monsters and uh, keep making M7s, but you know, of course, that's a little harder to do now. There's only two level 6 Gishki ritual monsters. Uh, I mentioned that in the description of my last video, if you didn't say that. Like I said, uh, the last video that I talked about will definitely be in the uh, description. I'll link it, so you, you guys should definitely go check that out first. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be referencing it a lot. I mean, I've already referenced it enough now, so, okay. Back to the other ritual spell card. So Gishki Aquamir has, of course, uh, the field of your hand, that little, you know, that little cost, and then you can shuffle this. So that's the only upside. You can shovel this card from the graveyard into the deck. I already read it. 
So what that means is basically that you can recycle uh, your Giski Ritual Monsters because it can come back to your hand. So what you do is uh, to pay for the cost for Giski Aquamere, you'd uh, actually use a level 6 Ritual Monster like another one that you had in your hand to, to Ritual Summon that monster. And then you could return the Ritual Monster to your hand and shuffle this back into the deck. Uh, so, you know, you could just keep moving that over and over. So, you know, Giski Aquamere is a pretty good card for its second effect. Next, we've got Dawn of the Herald. Dawn of the Herald says, when Herald of the of Perfection, which is the only card that can be used uh, to summon is Herald of Perfection. Uh, this one can be used for any Giski. This one can be used for any Ritual. This can only be used for uh, Herald of Perfection. When Herald of Perfection is Ritual Summoned by this card's effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target one of the monsters in your graveyard that was tributed for that Ritual Summon, return that target to the hand. So obviously, that's taking one of the cards that you used for the Ritual Summon and returning it back to their, your hand, so you're going less minus if you activate that effect, which, you know, uh, uh, even though they do... You know, the choice of uh, Herald players is Advanced Ritual Art. I see that some of them will put, like, one or two copies of this into their deck uh, just in case because Advanced Ritual Art is it two because, you know, it's the best option for Ritual decks right now. So, uh, Dawn of the Herald. I'd have to say that com if I'm comparing it to Gishki Aquamere, I think that the Gishki Aquamere one is better because you get Gishki cards back, right? But I guess if you didn't use a Gishki to, tribute to Ritual Summon it, it wouldn't help you that, that much. Um, it depends what you're using to summon, uh, you know, the Herald guy, but... Uh, there are a lot of, you know, uh, other Herald cards that, you know, you kind of want in your hand. So uh, I, could, I could see if you used, like, the Herald of Orange Light to Ritual Summon him. If you use a couple of those, you would want that to come back in your hand. So I'd have to say Dawn of the Herald is... Hmm, I'd have, to, I'd have to say Dawn of the Herald is probably better because you can return pretty much whatever you need back to your hand. And this can only return Gishkis. Uh, as for this one, though, I think that... The, the second effect here, uh, the banishing and, and, you know, adding the Necklace spell, uh, depending on, like I said, it depends on what other spells we get, but just the fact that it can add another copy of Exomere is probably good because we can continue Ritual Summoning. Okay, next, Hymn of Light. Hymn of Light is uh, the new card that can, yeah, uh, summon Sapphira, Queen of Dragons, which just came out in uh, the Duelist Alliance. So its additional effect is, if a Ritual Monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect and this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card instead. So, uh, I'm, I'm, um, hmm, that seems like it would be... That's a quick effect. It seems like it could be used on either player's turn, so that's pretty good. Uh, and it's for any ritual monster you control, so that can uh, basically protect any ritual monster that you have summoned. That's why I said, like in the last video, uh, Vexicus is combining the Herald deck with uh, the Sapphira card because the uh, they just work so well together. They're both light, and uh, of course, he can protect any of his ritual monsters with this card here. Um, so I'd have to say, uh, I think the Necklof one is, is pretty good because of the banishing and the adding. I think those are like just some really good additional effects. Um, yeah, I'd have to I'd have to rank the Necklace one above the Hymn of Light as well. Uh, but Hymn of Light can work in a deck that completely focuses on multiple ritual monsters, like the one that Vexus, Vexicus is piloting. All right, and finally, uh, hamburger. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> hamburger recipe because if you guys don't know, uh, I, I opened a Spell Ruler pack like a single pack a while ago, and I actually I pulled a Hollow out of it. But you know, the Hollow of course isn't a uh, Hungry Burger. Uh, but I did pull a Hungry Burger as well, so I thought I'd just put this on here as a little joke for you guys. Anyway, uh, tell me what you think of uh, the Necklace Exomere in comparison to these other ritual spell cards that we have. These other top quality ritual spell cards. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at that spatula. Look, look at the form. <laughs> so tell me what you guys think about Necklace Exomere and its additional effects for summoning this big guy here. Uh, down in the comments section below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Favorite it if you liked it that much. Subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Uh, share this with your Yu-Gi-Oh! friends on Facebook or Twitter or whatever you guys use. And... Uh, yeah, like I said, comment down below, tell me what you think, and uh, I'm going to go back and listen to the Underachievers right now because they just released a great album, <laughs> and I'll see you later, YouTube.